create a new scenario. So I'm going to my training folder. I'm going to create a new scenario. And I've already got a new scenario created. And it'll look like this when you create your new scenario. Name it whatever you like. And we're going to first call up our Google Sheet. So if you haven't already created a Google account, go ahead and create a Google account. And you're going to let's segue there real quick. Sign up for a Google account. If you don't already have it, then you're going to want to, well, it's a Google business account, and then you're going to want to go Google, Google Sheets. I still do this now because I don't know where the link is and I don't have it bookmarked. I just type Google Sheets into my browser and it pulls open first link, Google Sheets. Then I sign in or I go to Sheets and it will pull open the last account that I used. So once you are in Google Sheets, you'll click create a blank sheet and title it whatever you wish. I titled mine AI Automated Print Shop. And you're going to enter in your AI prompts into your different cells. And if you don't know what an AI prompt is, a prompt is what you feed the AI to get a result. In this case, we're using the sheets for our image prompts, the type of images we want to generate. So to do that, and I'm going to just go to a different account, because I've already got one set up where I've got everything like I like it. So here is my sheet, and here is my list of prompts. So in cell column A, cell 2, I have abstract art broad brush stroke in vibrant colors. You can exactly copy me if you want, just for example sake, or enter in whatever you want. Um, refining your prompts will be something you need to do before you really let this rip. You'll need to come up with a good set of prompts to generate the art that you want to put on your products. So I'm going to use this abstract art broad brush stroke. That means I'm going to call cell A2. And what I mean is let's go into make and I'm going to set up my first module. I'm going to click the little plus and I'm going to type Google Sheet. If I can spell today. There we go. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of modules that they offer. So scrolling is kind of tedious. I always do a search sheet. I'm going to select Google Sheets. And you have loads of things you can do if you're a spreadsheet wizard. But all I want to do for my automated process in print on demand is get a cell. This tells it to go to the spreadsheet and call up a particular cell or a prompt uh, in this case. So first things first, we'll want to connect Google. Google is really friendly. You'll notice I didn't open up a Google tab a minute ago and try to connect an API. Just like everything else with Google, all you do to make a connection is you sign in with Google. And that'll open up all of your existing Google accounts. If you have more than one, select the one you want to sign in on. And you'll select the account that has the spreadsheet you want to use. Um, for me, I create a new account every time I do a new business venture. So that's kind of the way I organize it. Neither here nor there. That's kind of beyond this video. But So select the account that you want to use. And I'm going to go ahead and use a connection that I already have that's live right here. And now, once you have your connection established, enter manually. You'll need to select select from the list. It'll automatically select my drive, spreadsheet ID. Click here to choose file. And you'll select the sheet that you want to use. There's the one that I created for my print on demand shop. Not sure what this field does, but you'll have to select sheet one or it won't work. And so just select sheet one. I think it just uh, selects the page, perhaps. Then we'll need to define the cell. And in this case, I'm going to use A2, which was my abstract art brushstroke prompt. And then I click OK. That's my first module. Now we create our second module. Now we're going to call Open AI. So search for OpenAI, and what we're going to do in this first module is to generate an image. You'll need to set up your connection if you haven't done so, and of course you haven't because you're probably just learning this. Title it whatever you want, and this is where you'll need to generate and grab your API key. So we're going to switch over to OpenAI, go to your account, view API keys, and you're going to create a new secret key. 
After you create it, it's going to pop it up and show it to you. You will need to copy and paste it right then. Once you have the pasted key or the copied key, you'll want to paste it where it says API key. Once you paste your API key there, you will need to find your organization ID. And that is done by going to settings right here. So if you're not already there, anywhere in manage account, you'll have this little sidebar and you choose settings and there we have your organization ID. You'll need to copy paste that into that field and then you have your connection established. Now we'll need to create a prompt. Well, we've already got our prompt. It's in the spreadsheet. So what you do is you're going to map it and you notice when you click down in this field it pops open a list. Every module that I had uh, here. Right now there's only one other module so that's all it shows. It would show up right here and I'm going to select value. That is going to call this Google Sheet and select the value that was chosen right there. So now that I've done that and I've prompted my photo, we need to select a size, response format, I keep it as URL, and the number of images, the only practical number for a print-on-demand process is one. So you'll leave that at one and hit OK. So now we have it set up to where it's going to draw from this Google Sheet and generate an image. Let's see how that works before we connect anything else. I'm going to click this little play button and run the process once. So you can see it already ran Google Sheet. It got the value of that cell and now it's running this and it's done. When it's done with its process, you'll see a little one. You can click that and you'll see input and output. So check this out. The input, it took my prompt, and then the output under data and one, we now have a URL because I told it to output the image as a URL, and if I want to see it, I can copy that URL, go to my web browser, paste it, there's the art that was generated. Beautiful. However, it's not very big, and if I try to blow it up, it looks kind of crappy. That's where the image scaler comes in, and we'll set that up here in just a little bit. Next thing is I need a product description and I need a title. Uh, so we've got the image that's going to go on our product, which by the way, right now I'm going to set up a piece of uh, canvas art. So I'm going to go into OpenAI again. This time I'm going to create a completion. And you'll notice when I select it, my OpenAI connection is already established. You don't have to do that every time. Once you do that once, you don't have to fool with it again. So create a prompt completion or create a chat completion. We're going to choose prompt completion. We're going to choose model text DaVinci-003. This is the most up-to-date, but also the most edited and stable. They don't give access to ChatGPT4 yet, unfortunately, but that's probably coming. Then we have where we want to put in the prompt that will generate the product title. So because I'm going to use this from a product title, I'm going to say generate a product title for a canvas art print using. Now why do I say using? I'm going to map it to the cell, so or to the image that I just generated, not to the cell, I'm sorry. Not the Google Sheet, it's just sitting there. So I'm going to map it to the image output. And you'll notice when I put down my cursor, I now get two options here. One of them is this little module, and it's kind of blocking it, but that's what it's referencing right there. So right there. I'm going to put down my cursor and I'm going to select this is the generate an image module and I'm going to go down and put data URL. So this is going to actually generate a title based on what it sees in the image. Now I'm going to go to show advanced settings. Max tokens is going to set a limit on my product title. So let's say 25 tokens. I don't really want to have more than 25 characters as my product title. If you want more than that, you can use more than that. It just, you know, 
costs a little bit more to do. I set my product titles to 25 max tokens. Temperature is an AI term. And what this is, is that the, when the closer you are to one, the more, um, you know, you're going to get a well-defined answer in line with your prompt. When you go less than one, you give AI the freedom to kind of go willy-nilly. I don't recommend that. Uh, you can test it just to see what it does. It's kind of funny, but, you know, you won't get the best results, I don't think. N is how many you want, and we only want one. We don't want it to generate several. I leave top P empty. Echo. This is very important. We do not want an echo. Echo is where it will read back the prompt before it answers you. So instead of just giving the product title, it would title your product the prompt plus the product title. You don't want that. You only want the response as your product title. So do not choose echo. Once this is done, you hit OK. Now I'm going to run this process again just to see what it looks like when these run in sequence. Now every time I run these, it's adding up a total in my OpenAI. So in my OpenAI account, under Manage Account, it has the running total of how much I've spent. Every time you run a process, you're adding a few cents to that. Uh, to give you an idea, it's like two cents an image and a few cents for text. Not very much. All right, these processes have completed. Let's see what this one put out. Generate a product title for an art print using, and then it takes the URL. Now let's take a look at the output. Choices, one, text. Twinkle Night Canvas Art Print. I'm not sure how it arrived at Tranquil Night, but you know, it, it let it do whatever it wants. You can refine this, um, and you can even have it to where you partially create the titles yourself. Now, let's create a product description. So we're going to create a completion again. This time we're going to use a little bit different parameters. So I'm going to use Text DaVinci 3. This time I'm going to say create a product description for a piece of canvas art using oop, and now I'm going to reference the title that I just generated. So over here we have the completion that generated the majestic art on a seascape and it's going to take the title and it's going to generate the description using the title. So this is something that I'm going to add right now. I'm going to kind of segue. This is just a little lesson in prompting. I found that negative prompting is just as valuable as positive. So oftentimes when I'm creating this right here, I'm actually going to tell it what I don't want it to do. So I'm going to say do not reference the name of any artist live, living or dead. Do not, you know, things like that. Every now and then it'll crank out a product and it'll just put some artist's name on it. And you're like, okay, that's nice, but uh, that won't fly, you know? So you kind of need to curate your pieces <laughs> a little bit before letting it rip to make sure that all your prompts are giving you the output that you want. So now, and before I go on, I'm going to show advanced settings. It's important not to overlook these because you can get some pretty hairy results. So I'm going to do 1100 max tokens. Oh, and that's another thing. I'm going to limit this. So create a project description, a product description for a piece of canvas art using that. And use no more than, let's say, 300 characters. You can do more, and I'm going to set my max tokens to 400. That just gives it a little bit of leeway, but in general, that's the max amount of tokens it can spend, the max amount of money it can spend uh, generating this. So I set it to 400, and in general, that's going to ensure that it will not go over that amount. You also don't want it to just generate a very long, wordy description that's ultimately useless for you. So there we go. Temperature, I'm going to set to 1, like I did before. Ignore top P. Set the number to 1. I do not want any echoes. And there we go.
So now I've got my description and I've got the first four. I've got the image generated, product title generated, and I've got my description generated. Now I have an optional module and I'm going to do one more completion. I like to create a list of hashtags that I'll use in social media. So just like we set it up before, we're going to create a prompt completion, select DaVinci 03, and now I'm going to say generate a list of 10 relevant hashtags for, and I'm going to reference the title. So there's my create a completion. There's the title. So I'm going to say, well, actually, I'm going to, instead of just referencing the title, I'm going to reference the article. So up here, we have the one we just created. There we go. Generate a list of 10 relevant hashtags for, and then it calls up the, the product description. And now it's important to have them formatted like you like it. I always include something like, do not use bullets, numbers, lists, and or commas. Separate hashtags with spaces. That's how I prefer it. Uh, if I didn't do that, it would likely put my hashtags as a bulleted numbered list right under the product description, which just looks sloppy. So this is another example of refining the AI prompts until you get what you want. Next, we're going to pass the image that we created into the image scaler. And to do that, I'm going to use a different module. So type in HTTP, and we're going to use the HTTP module. This is what I call the Swiss Army Knife of modules because it allows you to connect to really any website that has APIs. You might need to go through the documentation to figure out how to, to set it up or even write them uh, if they have specific instructions and can maybe help you. But for this, we're going to do make a request and the URL, I can't think of that off the top of my head. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually cut over to one of my other scenarios and let's see what that URL is. So I'm going to copy this URL and actually this URL right here, it's going to be the same for you. This is just the API URL for DeepAI. So you can copy paste it if you want. I'll include it down in the description. So let's go back into the scenario we are running and create that module again. HTTP, make a request. There we go. The method, we want to use post. Now we're going to add a header. That'll be API-key, all lowercase. It might be different for different websites that you use, but that's what it is for this. And this is where we're going to actually insert our API key. So I'm going to go back over to Deep AI, copy my secret key, and paste it in there. And now I'm set up. Where it says body type, we need to enter application x ww form URL encoded. And then where it says fields, we need to grab the image. So I'm going to say image lowercase, and under value, I'm going to map to the image generated by our OpenAI module. So there we go, data URL. Now it's going to take that image, pass it to this website, and enlarge it. And last option, parse response, yes. Don't need to select any advanced settings here. I've been getting the results that I want just this way. Don't know what the advanced settings do. So now we have that set up, and let's run the process and see our enlarged image. There we go, it's done. And let's see what the output was. So under output, we've got this output URL. Copy paste it to your web browser and there we go. And look at how much it's zooming compared to the first piece of art I created, much larger. That'll work perfectly for print on demand. Next, we need to pass the images and descriptions into our print on demand shop to actually create a product. So we're going to call up 
another module and we're going to select Printify. Printify is the print on demand provider. And you actually have to do this in at least two parts. First, you have to upload the image that your product is going to use before you use the create a product module. If you don't do that, when it creates the product, it has no image to grab. You have to upload the art that you've created before it can grab that product. So we're going to upload an image and now you need to set up your connection to Printify if you haven't done that. So you'll go over to your Printify, go over to your account under connections and generate your API token. Generate the token, copy it, and then you're going to paste it right there. Once you have your connection established, now we're going to map to the image. We want to give the image a name, so you have to generate a name when it loads to Printify, and I use the product title that we created. So I go over to the module that has the product title, I map to its text output, and now it's going to take the text output for the product title and make that the file name. Upload image by URL, since that's what we've been using, we've been outputting as URL, and now I'm going to go to the HTTP, HTTP module that we used to upscale the image, and I'm going to take the output of the upscaled image and I'm going to map it right there. Very important. If you map it to the original image created by OpenAI, it's going to be uploading the low resolution. You only want to upload the high resolution to make your print-on-demand products. So there we go. OK. That uploads the image. And the last step is to create the product. So we're going to create another Printify module. And this time we're going to go to Create Product. You want to select your shop. I have multiple, but just select the shop that you want to use. Then you're going to, under the title field, find the module where we generated the title, map to that. Now we're going to map to our description, so find the module where we created the product description. Map there, and remember how I created hashtags? Right after the description, I'm going to add the module with the hashtags. That way it'll output my description immediately followed by my hashtags. Now I'm going to go to Blueprint ID and this is where we select the product that we want to use. So in this case I'm going to be making a piece of canvas art and I know I can find what I want by typing in generic. So canvas gallery wraps, generic brand. But as you see you have access to every product on their list print provider. We'll select the provider for that particular product. Now we need to add our variants. It always wants to try to map that and you don't need to do that in this particular area so we're going to unselect map where it says variant ID. Scroll till you find the size that you want and I create square art so I'm going to do the largest square which is 36 by 36. I'm going to set my price to 19900 and the reason there is there's the two zeros because this system will always output two decimal points, but it just doesn't tell you it's going to do that. So to get a price of 199, I need to put in 19900. If I put in the decimal, it messes it all up. Now I'm going to enable that, and now I want to create another variant to give another size option. So I'm going to select the 24 by 24 square and I'm going to price that at $99, 9900 enabled. Now I need to put the image on these things. So where it says print areas, I need to add item. I need to add my variant ID. And just like before, I need to select my largest variant here. And that's actually all I'm going to select. It'll put the same size on all the smaller ones, but I'm just going to choose my largest and now under placeholders, I'm going to add where it says position, I'm going to type front. Front is the generic uh, position for putting your art on any item. So I'm typing front, and then where it says images, now we need to call up the right image. Under image ID, I need to map. So in this instance, I need to enable mapping, and I need to call up the image from where we uploaded it to Printify, not any of the other image modules. So I added my Printify module, upload image ID, right here. And now, for my placement, I need to use 0 0.5, 0 0.5.
This keeps it centered. And where it says scale, I'm going to use one. I don't want it to scale it up or down. And then where it says angle, I want to do 360. 360 just means it's going to be upright in this particular system. Any other value, your image will be not upright. So there we've got that. And now we want to add our tags. So I'm going to add the tags appropriate to the item. I use canvas, brush strokes, and abstract. If you're using Shopify, these can also help further categorize it. Otherwise, tags are totally optional. So their last part is print details. And this has to do with something that is in the print on demand service, uh, specifically for canvas art. You have the option, do you want your edges to be, you know, clean, white. I do mirrored to where it continues the art and wraps it around the edge. Looks just a little bit better. That's my personal preference. And then I click OK. And now we're ready to watch this puppy in action. So I'm going to save it and let's run the process. And at the end of this, it's going to put a product in my Printify shop and the product is going to be unpublished. There's also another module where we could add uh, to publish the product. I'm not doing that yet. And the reason that AI is not perfect, every now and then it generates a description or something that's just way off base. So I like to have a bunch of products be created and then go into the system on Monday morning and publish them myself. And I publish them after curating it a little bit just to make sure all my descriptions and titles are all right. Otherwise, you'll end up with some weird things. Hopefully in the future that changes. So there we go. It went all the way through every process. I'm going to go over to my print on demand store, go to my products, and there we go. There's the unpublished art that it just made. Art print of raging waves on the rocky coastline. <laughs> well, as you can see, I need to refine how I'm doing that title right here. Probably I just need to reference uh, brushstroke art or something like that to get it to work right but it generated the product, it put in my description, it added the, the, and as you can see, it kind of truncated. I wanted it to give me 10 hashtags, but I might have set my uh, tokens too low. So if I expand my tokens to something like 50 instead of 25, I'm probably going to get all of the hashtags like I wanted. So there we go, and the prices are set appropriately, and you can publish. Let's go back over to our make.com. Now, let's say you want to run this process at a regular interval. You can schedule it. You can set it based on the intervals right here, or you can type in the amount of minutes that you want in the intervals. So like 4,000 minutes if I did that, something like three days, one hour. I set each collection to publish a new product once a week. But when I first published the store, I had these processes running like once every 10 minutes just so that I could fill up my store with products. Then once I got going, I kind of backed off that. Um, and that's really it. So over time, as you build up your make processes, you can automate all sorts of things. And that's about it. That is how to build an AI automated print on demand shop. I'm going to publish a few more videos coming up to show different types of products since I just showed canvas art. So stay tuned and I'll be showing how to make t-shirts and things like that. Have a good one.